Hey there, Nick Dunthakos here. In this video, we're going to go over how to debug a shell script using bashes x flag as well as using set x. So, I do have a demo script set up for this video, and this was actually extracted out of some client work. This is basically a simplified version of the situation I ran into, but I created a run script, which by the way, I've done videos about in the past, basically a shell script that has a couple of wrapper functions to make it easy to run certain commands. But in this case, we can see this helm command is quite long. There's a whole bunch of flags that we pass in and values, and I didn't want to have to keep running this command from the command line. So I wrap this up into a little helper function in, the, in that run script, and here we are. So, and also by the way, you don't need to know very much about Helm or Kubernetes for the sake of this video, because it is going to apply to any type of shell script where you kind of just want to make like, you know, potentially a, a easier way to run some commands or do whatever you like. But in this case, this script is going to expect us to pass in two arguments, one for the namespace and one for the chart. Not very important what those things are, but understand that they are being used here as variables. And then optionally, we can also pass in some extra arguments that we're going to pass to Helm, and then those are going to be passed through over to Helm, and then we can do whatever we'd like. So let me just go ahead and open up a new window here, and we will run the script here. And the first argument is going to be the namespace, which is production, and the second argument is test here, the chart name, it doesn't really matter. But when I run this, we're actually getting an error from Helm that says that it requires two arguments to run. And if we jump back over here, you know, we do our we are passing them in and they are being defined here, yet this upgrade command is complaining that things aren't working. Now, when I started this project on day one, I didn't start with this uh, run script or shell script that I created. You know, I just started running this helm command directly in my terminal. So um, let's rewind there and maybe just see how that works. So if I get rid of some of these variables here and uh, just make it the same as a script, right? I'm just gonna hard code in like test here for this one, test for the chart one. Uh, we're also gonna jump to the beginning of the line here and we'll set this one to prod. And this is uh, the same command, right? And if I run this one, uh, we get a different error now, but actually this error is 100% fully expected. This is actually the success case. So for this short little demo here, I actually don't have a Helm chart here. I don't have a Kubernetes cluster set up. Uh, that's why we're getting this error here about you know failing to you know find or download this thing because it doesn't exist. So, but understand that this is the success case, right? This is things working, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, right? Because it's like, well, okay, uh, I started writing these commands manually and things work totally fine. Let me actually put that into my shell script, uh, replace some of those hard coded values with variables here that, that that are going to be passed in, and why is it different? Like it should be the same, isn't it? Because it's uh, the same command that we ran here works. Yet, when we run uh, the script here, it doesn't work. We're getting a different type of error here. It's not the, you know, the success case over here. So what is going on? And it's actually pretty interesting because, uh, yeah, when it comes to programming, oftentimes, most of the time that you spend is figuring out what the actual problem is, not solving it. Now, there are situations where solving the problem could be very difficult, and there's a lot of different things that you need to do. But in a lot of cases, uh, just having visibility of what your script is doing will help you solve a problem much faster because you actually understand like what the problem is. And this is where using uh, bash x comes into play, or dash x comes into play, because uh, we can actually run our same exact script as before with prod and test here. All I'm doing now is just passing this through uh, the dash x flag here with bash. And when we run that, we're actually going to get all sorts of great information. So just jumping back to the script uh, real quick, I do have an env file here with just one environment variable in there because that does exist in the real script here. And I wanted to show that off here because when we run dash X, we are actually getting the uh, the variable interpolation here for you know any ENVs that you have sourced in, as well as we're getting all the values to all the variables that we're passing in from the command line. And you know it's not specific to command line arguments here. They just happen to be variables here. If we had different variables, we'd uh, be able to get the actual values of them as well. And uh, eventually we get to the bottom here where we are seeing our full command that's actually being run. And if we carefully inspect this command here, right, uh, it is a little bit different than what we see here. So this command, sure, it's broken up into two lines with the with the backslash here, not important, but there is, uh, well, it's not too, too subtle now, but pretty obvious difference, right? It's like at the very end of this command, we're actually passing in an empty string with two quotes there, but this command doesn't have that. And now it's like, well, that's kind of interesting. Like what happens if you actually copy paste this and, and just run that? Oh, well, look at that. We actually get the same exact error as we get here. I'm gonna remove the dash X there and we can see same error. So now it's like not mystery solved, but it's like 
the world makes sense again, right? The shell script isn't just like magically breaking uh, things here. Now that we're actually running the same command in both situations, we're getting the same error. So now the, the real solution becomes, well, how do you not output the empty string here when no uh, extra arguments are being passed in? Because if I rerun this with like, you know, the help flag or something like that, then, you know, this is Helm's help menu and things are working fine. And actually, if I rerun this command here with uh, bash dash x, we can see too, well, actually, well, yeah, I can scroll up here. Uh, we should get some more information here. Yeah, we can see that it just ran it with the help flag uh, over here. But going back to the script here, here is a situation, right? It's like, well, if there's no extra arguments being passed in, then we end up basically with this, and this is no good. So we have a couple of different ways to solve this problem. One, we can just take this whole entire command here, wrap it into an if condition, where basically if this variable is empty, then we just don't pass in this argument at all else then we do the whole thing here. Totally would work, but eh, that just doesn't feel like a very elegant solution, right? Because yeah, you're duplicating this whole entire command. It's like, uh, this command could get longer. Like you're duplicating some code. Uh, it just doesn't feel very good. So uh, another option is, well, we can just remove the quote from here, right? And does it work now? Well, let me clear this and we will see. So I'm gonna run it like this, and suddenly, ah, look at that, it actually works. We get the success case error, right? Like this is actually working. And if I rerun that with bash x, uh, we do see that things are working here. There's no empty string at the end. Life is good. But it's not that good because if we run shell check against that, then shell check is gonna be like, by the way, you really should double quote these things here uh, so you can prevent glabbing and word splitting. Now, for the case of this case, that's actually, I don't think anything that's ever gonna happen. So in my final end game solution, I ended up going this route. And then what I ended up doing was I just uh, disabled that check here because you can just do shell check disable on the line above it. And then for the code, you actually have to pass in whatever code that you see here. So this one is SC2086. So we can just replace that with 2086. And if I rerun shell check here, then things are good. Everything is golden. Now there's a couple of different ways we can we could have solved this one. Um, this is one way of doing it. So also, by the way, if you're not familiar with this syntax here, like the colon three, this is going to parse out the first two arguments and basically like throw them out. So this is uh, one way, by the way, to get all the arguments passed in from a command line and pass them through to something else. But in this case, like the star is, is treating everything as a single string, and I'll, I'll show you why I'm using that and not the at symbol in a second here. But uh, you know, we're we're explicitly handling the first two arguments that need to be passed in for the namespace in the chart. So we actually want to start at the third argument. That's why the three is here, so that everything else, like these extra helm args, could be passed through. Now you might be wondering, you know, why not just use the at symbol here? Because if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, you know, using dollar sign at is a really nice way to get all the arguments being passed in from uh, a script and pass them through to another command or, you know, through, uh, you know, function to function, whatever you like. But if you actually do this one, now let me actually put back the double quotes here, just so it's like before, and I do shell check here. Well, now shell check is going to be like, you know, you're actually signing an array because uh, the at symbol is an array, but we're assigning that to uh, just a regular variable here that's going to be a string. So it says, you know what, you should probably either turn this string variable into an array or just use the uh, asterisk here. So that is why we are not using um, the at symbol here. But there is like technically another way to go about this one too. Like you could just do this and pretty sure that is going to completely work even with the quotes. Uh, let's see, yeah, totally works fine. Our script also works fine. We get the success case here. And this feels like, I don't know, I guess technically quote unquote, the best solution maybe. But the issue I have with this one is I would actually prefer to ignore the error, bring it back to how it was before, because just having this floating around in the middle of the script, because the function that this is in, in the real project, I think that function is not, it's not massive, but it's like 30 lines long or something like that. And it's the same reason why I turn these into named uh, values here. Like I could totally have put a, you know, a one here, a two here and a two here, but that's just like, it's, it's very hard to main, maintain that stuff in the future, especially um, if you start dealing with things like the bus factor, right? So I, I'm working at this new position now doing some work for a client where I am basically the apps person, the operations manager or, you know, lead operations, whatever you want to call it, right? It's like, but I am at the moment, the only person doing this work and you know, what happens if uh, I get hit by a bus or maybe I win the lotto if you want to be more optimistic about reasons why you might quit a job. Uh, this information is only in my mind, nowhere else. And if I need to write comments all over the place, like, 
you know, oh, just put like, you know, what is a th like, what is this? And like, blah, blah, blah. Like I need to write like five lines of documentation just to explain what all these variables are. Might as well just turn them into variables. So, well, maybe this totally works. Uh, I am, I'm actually much more in favor of naming this to be something that's actually explicit because when you read this, it's like, oh, extra Helm args. Cool. So basically I can customize what I want to pass into Helm in case I want to do like a dash dash dry run, like on the fly or something like that. So that's why I'd have that uh, defined here. And then also, you know, going back to what we had before, you know, that's also why I have uh, the star here because we saw that, you know, we were getting that other shell check error, the, the other one wherever. Yeah, this one over here when it wasn't that. So that is basically a very quick way to debug shell scripts using dash X. All you have to do, pop in your script, any arguments, and you're good to go. Now, there's also another way to do this. Like if you get tired of having to pass this in all the time, uh, well, Maybe during development, you could also just set X here. And then when we actually run this script, it is going to have bash dash X here applied all the time. Now, this could be super handy if you're just hacking away in a project and uh, you know, you're working on things and you're getting tired of doing like print-based debugging where you're just echoing things out to see if it works. But I don't know, if you start following the Unix philosophy, like no news is good news, I don't think there's really any case where I would actually ship a script with this defined uh, after I'm done developing it. So because, yeah, the no news is good news, I'd rather have less output and really only need this extra input when I really want to debug something, like if something's going wrong, then I just do that. But yeah, you know, initially developing a script, I can make a case here for just adding that there. And then, you know, when you're ready to commit your code and ship it, then maybe you just remove that and you're good to go. But yeah, that's basically it when it comes to this. By the way, you know, using dash X, pretty sure you're going to have to use uh, bash here. Like that's just not going to work, I don't think, just using the... Uh, POSIX compliant shell there, but actually let's see for fun. You know, all this stuff is unscripted this video. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, actually still works. Interesting. So I didn't expect that because like we're running it through bash, but yeah, I guess in this case, like your script is really running through the bash interpreter here. It doesn't matter if this is defined as a shell script. So yeah, but this for sure is no way going to work, right? Because that's like, it's just running it through here. Like, but bash won't exist because we're using shell. Please don't prove me wrong. Yeah, there we go. Well, also there are like some issues here, like, yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So ENV not found, actually that doesn't make sense. Is that line six? Hmm, well, it, maybe maybe it just blows up here. I don't know, that's maybe a video for another day or let us know in the comments below like why that didn't work. Anyways, I don't wanna ramble too long. You get the gist of it, right? If you wanna just debug your stuff really quickly on the fly, just use that one and you're good to go. With that said, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions about this, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.